Hello, I'm not Chuck. This is the third part in a three-part series about changing the antenna on the roof of your RV. Coincidentally, I'll also show you how I repaired a small leak in the roof underneath the antenna. This particular part focuses on replacing the insulation that I had to remove because it was wet and also installing the control handle that rotates the antenna. Now, let's get to it. Here's a look at the opening that I made in order to access the bottom of the new television antenna. It's also an opening which I used to clean out the wet insulation from the opening under the old antenna that had been leaking apparently. The wires that you see, the yellow and white wires, are the 12 volt wires that went to the ceiling lamp that I'm not going to reinstall. The large piece of black coax goes to the amplifier and the distribution panel for the television and the small piece of coax goes to the bottom uh, into the bottom of the antenna and uh, up to the antenna itself. All right, so I'm turning around sideways. Now you can see the bottom of the antenna in the center of the picture. That is where the control arm will connect in order to be able to rotate the antenna. Now I'm going to put you up inside the attic, that is the space between the ceiling and the roof, so you can see what things look like there. You're looking north toward the front of the trailer. I have now removed all of the wet insulation and have dried the interior of the attic space as best I can, although I am going to uh, turn a fan back onto the opening and it, let it run until I get ready to seal up the hole. All right, now we're rotating to the driver's side of the travel trailer. And continuing to come on around from the west or the driver's side to the south, which is the rear of the travel trailer. You're looking directly toward the rear now. And rotating the rest of the way around to the east or the passenger side of the trailer. And rotating the rest of the way back around to the north side or the front of the travel trailer. Hopefully there is no water left in there. I do not believe there is any wet insulation. I do not believe there is any water. But uh, I'm going to take another look uh, just before I get ready to uh, seal the opening off and put in the control for rotating the antenna. I've now had this fan running for more than 24 hours, blowing air straight up through the hole in the ceiling to circulate some air between the ceiling and the roof and thus eliminate any residual moisture. My next step is to replace the wet insulation that I removed with some new dry insulation and finish the installation of the control portion of the antenna. As you can see, I was pretty busy and I couldn't really install the insulation and talk at the same time. So I'll tell you a little bit now about the process while you watch the video. 
First of all, I should have been using gloves and a mask, and I highly recommend that you do so. I'm using R13 fiberglass insulation with a craft paper backing. I bought a roll 15 inches wide and 32 feet long for about $20, but I only used about a third of it. I tried to cut pieces to fit the areas where the wet fiberglass had been removed. I worked in a circle around the hole, putting each piece in as I went. I had to roll the pieces in order to get them to go through the hole. I finished up with the two final pieces just above the hole, and I used two pieces in order to have a separation between them for the extrusion to pass through that connects the handle assembly to the base of the antenna. Well, as you can see, it's not an easy process to fit that insulation back into the uh, space between the ceiling and the roof. 
it would be if uh, this hole were bigger, but I don't want the hole any bigger than absolutely necessary. Uh, I believe I have replaced essentially all the insulation that I removed because it was wet, and now it's ready to uh, actually finish installing the control portion of the antenna. It may not be perfect, but it's going to help a lot when the weather gets cold. Okay, the next step is to put a little tape, electrical tape, over the ends of these butt splices. <clears throat> the chances of them shorting out are almost zero without the tape. But, to eliminate any possibility, I'm going to put a piece of tape over the exposed end of each one of the wires. And, I'm going to stow those wires out of the way, back under the bottom layer of insulation. At this point, I don't need them because I don't intend to reinstall the light that was here, but at some point I might decide I want a light in here and it'll be nice to already have the wires in the ceiling. Next I'm going to connect this wire, which goes to the amplifier on the wall of the travel trailer, to this connector, which goes to the actual antenna up on the roof. I'm going to snug it up finger tight. That's as tight as I can get it with my fingers. Now I'll take a little adjustable wrench, give it one additional snug, and I don't have to worry about that coming loose. <clears throat> now I'm also going to stow that away under the insulation between the roof and the ceiling. I want to try to get that as completely out of the way as I possibly can so that as I continue to work it won't be in my way and won't be in the way of any screws that I put through the ceiling. This piece of plastic is called in the instructions that you get from Weingard the extrusion. It's a piece of tubing that's hollow from one end to the other except for a cross member. That cross member performs a very critical function. It makes it a slot on the handle assembly of the antenna so that you can put the other end into the base of the antenna, which also has a slot for this cross member, and turn the handle assembly to rotate the antenna. In order to help all that line up, I've created a filler plate that's the same thickness as the ceiling. But as you can see, I have no way to mount that ceiling plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a backer board. It's actually two pieces. The first piece goes on this side of the hole, close to the edge. The other piece is a little more difficult to put in. I have to start it diagonally, get it going up through the hole, and as soon as the corner's clear, then I can turn it back horizontal, Fit it back under the insulation. And now it's free to slide back and forth as needed in order to position it in the right place for the spacer to line up with it. For the extrusion to go up through the insulation and mate with the antenna. So, I'm going to put that together and put it, uh, put it back in. Now I have the spacer secured to the backer plate with some very small wire nails. I do not have the backer plate and spacer assembly secured because I want to be able to take that out if necessary sometime in the future. I have the backer plate extension, which was that piece of wood about like that, secured to the ceiling with a couple of uh, number six uh, half inch screws that are countersunk so they don't protrude above the level of the ceiling. 
So now I'm ready to attach the control arm to the extrusion after I make sure that I have cut the extrusion arm to exactly the right length. I have inserted the extrusion through the spacer, through the backer plate, into the base of the antenna, and it's as far up as it will go. As you maybe can see, it is almost exactly flush with the surface of the spacer. So according to instruction B in the assembly manual, I would want to cut that one half inch shorter than it is now because I want it one half inch above the ceiling. But there's an added complication, and that is I'm going to place this escutcheon plate over the top of that in order to make it look nicer, not so rough. So that means I need the extrusion cut one half inch shorter than it is now, minus the thickness of this escutcheon plate, which is one eighth of an inch. So I want to cut three eighths of an inch off of the extrusion. I have cut the end off of this extrusion. I've cut three eighths of an inch off. So I'm going to put it back up through the hole. Try to seat it in the base of the antenna again. There it goes. Now it's seated in the base of the antenna. I've got my spacer seated where it's supposed to be. I add the escutcheon plate. And I measure. And I am almost a half an inch recessed. Now, it's better if I leave it a little long than if I make it too short. I can always take a file and take a little more off of it if it's too long, but if it's too short, it's no good. So I would say it's not three-eighths and it's not a half. It's probably seven sixteenths. I'm going to try it and see if that'll work. If not, I'll pull it out, take another sixteenth or so off it. I believe that job is complete. I'll zoom in a little and show you how the antenna rotates. As it is now, the antenna is pointing in the travel position, which means that it's pointing toward the rear of the travel trailer. If I push up on the button and turn, I can feel the antenna turning. If I were searching for a station and I thought I had it pointed in the right direction, I would let the knob go. It would lock into place. If I wanted to move it some more, I'd push up again, turn it some more, let the knob lock into place. If I was through for the day or through for the trip, I push in, rotate it back around till the antenna is in the travel position, let out, it would lock into place, and I'd be ready to go. And that concludes the series on replacing the television antenna on top of your RV and correcting some damage that had been done by a small water leak through the roof under the antenna. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, I'm not Chuck.